So we've looked at cyclohexane and then we flip cyclohexane and drew another conformation. Now we didn't discuss the energies of the conf those conformations, but those two conformations have the same energy. And frankly, that's kind of boring. So let's look at something that doesn't have the same energy when we flip the molecule. So here's a simple molecule, methyl cyclohexane. And of course we're going to draw this as a chair and see what we come up with. Okay, so here is one of our chair forms. And we can just pick, let, let's, let's call this carbon 1 right here. And this carbon, um, let's arbitrarily say the methyl group is up. We could just as easily make it down. So if we make it up, uh, I tend to deal with the axial position first. So these two, the two lines coming to carbon number one are down. So we're going to say the down group is a hydrogen and then ax, um, equatorial up is the methyl group. Now we could have just as easily put the methyl group where the hydrogen is. We had to pick one or the other and that's what we chose. But uh, we'll see. We're going, to draw, we're going to draw it both ways. So that's the methyl group up. As we go around the ring now, these are going to be axial ups and these in particular are axial down and there's another axial up. So the rest of the ring is just full of hydrogens. So we can just put the hydrogens in place. And now we have to fill in our equatorials. Our equatorials are going to be in the opposite orientation of our axial groups. That's axial up. This is going to be uh, equatorial gently down. Equator this is axial down, so it's equatorial up. Axial down, equatorial up, and so on over here. Both equatorial downs. Great, so that's one of our chairs. I promise you this would be a little more exciting. It hadn't gotten any more exciting yet. So let's go ahead and flip the chair and see what happens. Now it's going to start getting a little more exciting. So here's our other chair. Notice that this end of the chair, this carbon 1, is kind of pointing downward here. Now it's pointing up It's because we flipped it. So what's happening on carbon number 1? Well, carbon number 1, the methyl group, has now is now going to be bent upwards. And so now it's in the up position. Well, the up position on this carbon, both those bonds point up. The up position is axial. And there's equatorial down. And now let's go around the ring. So here's carbon 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4. And these two bonds to this carbon point down. So axial is down. For carbon 3, axial is up, down. And these always alternate. And now let's get the equatorials. You can draw on your center point if you find that helpful. Hydrogen and this one will be equatorial up. Fantastic. Okay, so here are our two chair forms. Note that the methyl group has changed. Over here on the left in this chair, the methyl group is kind of sticking out away from the ring. And here um, on the right, it's more sticking above the ring. As it turns out, this methyl group, when it adopts, an axial orientation actually starts to bump into these other axial groups, which in this case are just hydrogens. And so this creates a steric interaction. There's a steric clash. Therefore, this conformation is, whoops, is less stable. And this conformation is more stable. So now we're looking at different conformations that have different uh, energies. And this is what we saw when we drew our Newman projections of, of regular alkanes. Oh, the eclipsed is less stable than the staggered conformation, or the gauche is less stable than the anti-conformation, in, in particular with butane. So now we can see the same thing with cyclohexanes. And when we deal with cyclohexanes, we'll need to be mindful of what is the preferred conformation. Because sometimes the preferred conformation will not lead to the reaction action we want. So we have to be mindful of the energetics of our cyclohexanes and this is how we do it. We have to draw the cyclohexanes and think about the orientation of our R groups.